Hello friends, and welcome to PyShine. This video is about creating a basic graphical user interface in Python. This is part 2 of PyQt5 learning series. By the end of this video you will be able to make a simple GUI, with tabs containing buttons, dials, and sliders on them. Please consider subscribe to PyShine for the upcoming videos. In the part 1, we made a simple GUI with menu, menu items and sub-items. In this lab, we will continue from the previous main.ui file. We also have a caution PNG button in this lab. So let's select and open up the PowerShell. By pressing Shift key and right click, we enter the text designer and press Enter. Let's open the main.ui file. We can run it by pressing Ctrl plus R. Let's change the title of the main window. In the object inspector, click on the main window, and then in the property editor, go to the window title, and enter the name. There you go, the title has changed as PyShine. Next, let's change the menu bar, rename, the first menu as file. Next we add an edit, view, and settings menus. Let's add an icon to the exit menu item. We can also change the main window icon. Simply, click on the main window in the object inspector. Then, in the property editor, go to the window icon and click on the value space. Now, we can assign an image to the title icon. The icon will appear besides title of the main window upon running it. Let's add a maximize and normal view menu items. Now, we add the status tip for the exit menu item. As we move over the exit, the status bar shows, click to exit. Alright, let's add some functionality to the menu items. First, click on the exit, or in Object Inspector, click on Action Exit. Now, in the Action Editor, select the Signal Slot Editor tab. Here, we click on the green plus icon, to add an action for the exit. In the sender, we will select the Action Exit. Whenever this signal is triggered, we will like to close the main window. So, the receiver will be main window, and the slot will be close function. Let's run it. As now we click on the exit, the main window will close. Similarly, let's add functionality to maximize and normal menu items. Let's run it. We can now maximize or keep normal size of the main window. Now, let's add the shortcut keys in the action editor. Double click under the shortcut key and press a key combination to set as shortcut. Similarly, 
We add a shortcut keys for the maximize and normal actions. Let's save and run it. Let's come to more interesting part. We will add the tab widget from the containers section. Click and drag the tab widget on the GUI. Let's expand it. The tab widget has now two pages, named as tab 1 and tab 2. To change the name of tab 1, click on the tab widget in the object inspector, and then go to the current tab text in the property editor. Let's rename it, buttons, and then press enter. Let's click and change the name of tab 2 as dials. To add another page, simply click on the dials and then right click to insert page after current page. Let's rename this new page as sliders. So now, we have three pages. Let's add some buttons on the buttons page. From the buttons section, add the push button. Add the tool button. We also have a radio button. Similarly, add the check box, the command link button and the dialog button box. Let's run it. You can see that all the buttons are available on the buttons page. Currently, there is no functionality added to the buttons. We will add the functionality to them in the next upcoming video. Let's add some dial widgets on the dials page. We can change the size of dials. Let's add sliders to the slider page. We have horizontal and vertical sliders. Let's run it. Now you can see that all pages have widgets working. Each slider has default position at zero. Let's click on vertical slider and go to the slider position in the property editor. We can change the default slider's position. The maximum value is set at 99, so, even you write 100, it will be selected as 99. Each dial has a default position at value 0. The maximum value of dial is 99. So, we have a total of 100 values or levels for each dial. Let's run it. That's all for this part 2 video of PyQT5 learning series. Have a nice day and see you again.